The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour. As always, it doesn't matter where you're at, as long as you're here at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So, well, as we left yesterday, I was looking for at least a retest of around 4,000. We closed uh, a bit above that, a little bit, not much. Uh, didn't really know what to expect from uh, the numbers this morning. Uh, as everybody now knows, they were horrific. Seems like, at least from the action yesterday, more than likely those numbers were starting to leak out early uh, across the fruited plain. And, uh, well, we've got, uh, what, down 2.5% on the spies today, which is kind of about the norm. But uh, do we have a low in yet? And the answer is, I don't think so. There's a handful of reasons why. Uh, the first is that I wanted to see some kind of low uh, in the Dow. The previous lows have come in uh, at a, over 1,000 on the Dow being down. So maybe we get the rest of that on Monday or early Monday or early next week. Uh, that is one thing. Two, uh, we're looking for something like about 18 billion shares uh, to blow out the lows. Right now, we're doing about 7.8 billion, so not even half so far. So the volume really hasn't picked up. There are some stocks out here that people are looking at that did blow through the lows on lighter volume. Uh, a lot of self-serving. Some other things out here that make me think that we – could have a low, but we're not quite there. Are a lot of self-serving uh, downgrades, uh, as the ones that I'd give them the uh, cow has left the barn award for. Uh, now that they are down uh, to 25% of their high, uh, we've got uh, Goldman Sachs and J.P. Morgan and a bunch of other people throwing uh, gasoline on the dumpster fire that is the stock price of these. And generally, they only do that when they want to buy it themselves. There's not a lot of reasons to do it other than a couple. One is to buy it. The other one is to get a market uh, where they can cover their short positions. And uh, have, is there a week that goes by? I don't bring up Jesse Livermore. I know in the den I do all the time, but on the show, maybe not so much. But I always remember him. Uh, one of the uh, better passages of the book uh, where he was uh, stuck in some kind of commodities trade uh, when he was trading in the uh, late 1890s and you know, probably to about 1935-ish. You know, you had some stocks, but there are about maybe 200 tradable stocks. Uh, right now, I think there's uh, over 6,000 stocks that trade more than a million shares a day. Today, So we have a much better selection of different things to get into. There weren't that many back then. They were a handful of steel stocks, a handful of uh, coal stocks, a handful of railroad stocks, and uh, the most, uh, well, at least in the 1920s, uh, the biggest tech stocks of all time, uh, Motorola and RCA with the advent of radio. Uh, but uh, he was stuck, and I can't remember exactly where in the timeline it was, but I have a feeling that it was in uh, around uh, 1920s or so. And he was uh, trading commodities, and I think he was uh, trading wheat or corn, one or the other. And he was stuck in a – where he tried to corner the market and someone else had outmaneuvered him. Uh, and so everybody thought, you know, corn, wheat pretty much tied together. Uh, and everybody knew that there was no way they were going to let him out of uh, a position where they could probably bankrupt him. Uh, so he was in, let's say he was in wheat, because I can't remember the story, but it was wheat and corn. 
Um, so let's say he was in wheat and he had all these uh, contracts or uh, futures in it and he was going to get crushed. So uh, he took what money, little money he had left, went to his wife, got all the jewels, hocked everything, and uh, just started to sell the bejesus out of uh, corn because he was in wheat. And uh, everybody thought, hey, maybe there's some horrible weather coming or maybe it's already come or everything else. And they started to cover their uh, long positions or short positions, whichever he was on the other side. And he actually made a market by creaming another one. And, you know, it's not uncommon to see big stock operators, which is what he, they were called in his day. Today we call them the Wall Street Banks. Um, and so I'm always a little reticent uh, when they come along with uh, uh, a lot of help. Kind of reminds me of the government. We're here to help you. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, I'm the big Wall Street guy. I'm, I'm just here to help you. Uh, can I borrow your wallet and keep it for self? Say, uh, self, self, uh, safekeeping, you know, just in case anything would happen to you. Um, just let me borrow your wallet for a while. Um, yeah, they tend to uh, be all light, sweet and light, but almost always they have some kind of ulterior motive. Ulterior? Yeah. And uh, so I see a few of these stocks out here. These guys are kicking in the teeth when they're already down and drunk in the gutter. And thinking, eh, they're probably either covering or they're thinking it's time to go long. But uh, for the most part, it's not that way. It's just kind of a broad brace uh, uh, sell. Now, we can think of a couple scenarios. One is this is the third retest of 3850. We haven't quite gotten there yet. Uh, but I think that certainly is a possibility. I dislike trying uh, to play uh, long positions against a low which has not been retested that's fairly close. Um, you're probably going to see 80 percent that when we were 50 points off the 38.50 lows, I think you're going to probably figure out if you went back through history on the S&P or any of the other indexes, if you got within to a, like a percent or half after a fairly large move, I'm going to say it's probably 80% of the time you at least go back and uh, say hello to their little friends down there. And so even if it only lasts a second, maybe it only lasts in the futures overnight, I'm still suspecting we get to that 3850 level. And to me, that would be a triple low. And if that low holds, it would be fairly significant. If it fails, uh, that opens up 3350. So I think it's going to be a big week next week. Um, we were thinking, or at least I was thinking, that uh, maybe the markets would hold together until the 4th of July and then take the big nosedive. We didn't last uh, that long with uh, uh, what is probably the most horrific news the uh, market has seen uh, as far as the CPI. Uh, pretty much everything back to 1980, uh, the... Uh, malaise of the Jimmy Carter year. Well, we're back there. Be back in a minute. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect your hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Monk Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ.
Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month. And try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Now, toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 7618. And we're off uh, 100 points on the SP cash. Dow's off. Uh, was that right? Let me go ahead and update that one. Yeah, off 100 points on the S&P cash. Dow's down 719. NASDAQ's down 364. Russell's off 54. Uh, why I'm not um, bullish on gold here, uh, we did have quite the turnaround. I still suspect uh, that if we find some kind of low, gold could still find uh, 1776 or 1775. Uh, I think, uh, you know, we have a lot of people going after gold, uh, getting into cash today, a lot of other things. And those generally don't last very long uh, unless there's an underwhelming or overwhelming uh, issue. And for gold, I, I, with the dollar up and everything else, it's very tough for me to see with probably a percent and a half higher interest rates coming before the end of the summer uh, that we're going to see uh, gold breakout, but I've been wrong on some other things. I know a lot of people are long it, and I think right now, in the short term, you're probably right. But uh, I still suspect this thing is not breaking out until it goes and washes everything out at about 1775 or so. So we shall see. But uh, I think maybe this is one of those things where it is kind of a one day deal. Um, and especially when we go into next week, we'll probably have a much better idea. To what else do we have? Uh, to, 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 okay. Uh, let's do a little history and then we'll move on. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. It is history repeating. And on this day in 1858, really the first really big uh, technology uh uh, expenditure uh, was uh, started, and that is two ships headed out on what will become the first operational transatlantic cable, one ship from England and one ship from the Americas. They meet it, met in the middle of uh, uh, the ocean and started uh, eh, heading back to port on both ways after uh, connecting each side of the cable. 
It only lasted a handful of days. Technology still wasn't up to the point of uh, understanding both the science and uh, the methodology. Not so much the methodology is uh, uh, working with uh, the, the uh, products available at the time to make a cable that wouldn't uh, get water ingested over time. And uh, I think it worked for about 10 days. There were some thoughts that uh, that uh, some believed that they would put, uh, some people have been paid to put nails into it. They did find more than a few into the cable, which let uh, water into it. Uh, but there was still, even at this time, uh, uh, no real science to figure it out. Uh, it would take after the uh, Civil War to try this again. At that point, they did have at least some scientists start to look and get a cursory idea of how this all worked. And the next one worked for, I don't know, about five or ten years after the Civil War. And then, of course, they continue to make them better and better. And now uh, we've got uh, cables that have been in the ocean for more than 60 years uh, that work as good as the day they were put down. We have much better equipment to actually lay them, too. But, of course, uh, most of them are all fiber these days never can have enough fiber uh but uh that's it first big really big high dollar technology and a failure too on this day in 1858 uh okay let's go ahead into some other stuff that we are looking at uh to, to, to and some questions of the day uh, to, 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 okay. Let's go back here. And we got a little bit of a bounce. Uh, yeah, I would still love to see uh, the 3850, and I think the risk is extremely high until you get that retested. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the usual suspects uh, today. Uh, Microsoft. Looks like it's coming back down to retest its previous low. Uh, we did get into this gap higher. That goes back to the 23rd of May. It had 33 million shares on the upside. We only have about 18 million on the downside right now. And if you look at the extreme low, the May 20th low, uh, you had uh, 40 million shares. So you are coming back and finding some lower volume. That's on the positive side of the market. Um, we to, to what else have we have uh, self-serving upgrades and downgrades uh, Netflix and docu uh, Netflix is down a little bit today uh, volumes not all that uh, exciting you do have a low at 162.71 and uh, that's on 18 million shares you got eight almost nine today but uh, you know if you got back into that candle and I would love for that to happen next week Maybe we get a nice run to the 4th of July before we take yet another turn lower. But uh, so far, not so bad. Uh, to, to Amazon, which we'll take a look at here. Uh, it's split, not quite working out uh, as people would thought. But again, fairly light volume in Amazon. Uh, previous lows on May 12th had 132 million shares. 100 million shares on May 24th. Uh, today, we've got 58, 59 million shares. So there isn't a lot of juice behind this. It actually charts looking fairly good for making a potential three, uh, uh, three uh, attempts at a low. And maybe, they, we, maybe things are better or turn around faster than we think. But uh, really not so bad as we look at it today. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about IBM over the last few days. Uh, and talking about it, it's pulled back. Um, you know, a lot of good things happening on the quantum computing front, uh, especially uh, in Europe. Uh, a lot of discussion about it. Not a bad-looking little hammer out here for IBM today. Is there anything that really jumps out at me? No. Um, the big problem I have with IBM right now is the April 21st high at 141.88, had almost 10 million shares. You spiked it for a day on June 6 on half that volume, and you're back into the trading range. So 
I'm not as sanguine on thinking that this uh, is a time yet to buy an IBM. Um, we have a request for a little bit of oddball. Don't you knock it off with them negative waves. Why don't you dig how beautiful it is out here? Why don't you say something righteous and hopeful for a change? Always with the negative wave, Moriarty. Always with the negative wave. Well, we won't be negative. We'll be positive here. Did I get that right? RBBX. Get it here. Red box. Yes, uh, there's always a bull market somewhere. And uh, actually, there is one that is higher today. That's Red Box Entertainment. Got 1470. It's given a little, about half of that back. Still on the positive side. We'll be back in a minute. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my Gold Report. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we return, a uh, question to take a look at Roku, uh, the May 12th low at 10 million shares at 75.12. Uh, we're in about 6.2, 6.3 uh, million shares. So probably going to come in around eight, maybe eight and a half, which would connote that we're probably still going to retest the 75.12. I think a lot of these out here gives an indication. You actually had a 14 million share low on the 24th of May, two that you're kind of into already. So again, like I said, I'm not horribly bearish here. Um, the odds just are, though, that you retest significant lows, in this case, that 3850 area on the S&P cash, uh, before you go higher. And there's like about an 80% probability we're going to do that. 
So could we bounce here? We could. But my fear is that you bounce for a day and you're right back down to 3850. And I would rather uh, wait and hold my breath and wait for the whites of their eyes at 3850, look at the volume there, and then make what I think is probably a much better risk reward decision than out here. Uh, Apple, AAPL for uh, Rick. Rick says, uh, I s uh, saw what you uh, wrote in the Tech Insider. Uh, da -da -da -da. Anyway, I was saying about uh, how problematic that the right to repair was for Apple. Uh, I think I did that on Monday. Um, and it could cost up to 10% of their business, which is fairly big. But uh, I, I did cover it in the Tech Insider. But on a week ago, on Friday, uh, the first state in the nation passed a right repair bill. And there's a lot of stuff kind of like that going on. Uh, on Tuesday, I think it was, uh, the EU passed uh, another bill stating that Apple would have to have some standardized charger uh, for their products. And Apple, after uh, fighting it for two years, finally capitulated on Tuesday, saying, that, yeah, they would have a USB-C connector for uh, the, uh, the phones. I don't know if that's really that big a deal, other than the fact that they uh, fought it for so long. Uh, but, uh, you know, you, when you're looking at these lows, they are not bad. This is not a chart that I would mind buying if we just go and have one more drive in the S&P back to the lows. Uh, right now, we've got 56 million shares, and that's going into a 137 million share low. So I'm not going to get uh, incredibly disappointed. I know we have uh, on the, what is it, the 20th. The 20th? Let's see, where is it at here? Yeah, the 20th, we've got the June 10th uh, vacation day. We've talked about how characters of the market, if not directions, change on three-day weekends. So we're going to get yet another one this month. I think this is the first time we've had it, right? Yeah. So we'll find out what happens on these three-day weekends. But certainly... Maybe we get a little bit of a rally back into July 4th, and then maybe uh, that rally, maybe not as big as this last one, and then we go drive for lower prices. But uh, right now, this isn't making a lot of uh, charts that make me feel uh, like uh, jumping off of a uh, bridge or anything. Um, but uh, certainly that. 137 million shares, 56. Oh, we've got a caller. We're going to go to uh, John in Philly. How are you doing today, John? David, I'm doing very well. Thank you for taking the call, sir. Give me a full report. Yes, I would uh, like to ask you to share your thoughts, please, on <clears throat> an option trade setup going into next Friday, a week, uh, week from today, June seventeenth, uh, the quad witch options expiration. Uh, we had a huge buildup of put buying, of course, from you know March 29th. ninth. Uh, we're getting more of that here yesterday, today. Uh, we have you know five trading days left to go until options expire. Uh, do you see the potential, and what are the parameters you'll be considering in purchase and doing a, a very short-term call option purchase, playing for you know a short squeeze rally into quad witch? Um, I'd like to uh, listen to your thoughts so that I can compare notes with the things that are percolating in my mind. Well, historically, uh, if you head down uh, into uh, as far as we have already, generally into options expiration, even if it's going to bounce, you almost go into that into the Friday before you get the bounce. And I think you can remember a couple of times I jumped in like at 11 o'clock in the morning in, in some massive reversals. 
And those tend to be kind of those days, right? You get into maybe Wednesday this week, maybe Thursday or Friday, or next week, I mean. And generally, if you're going to get a reversal after you've been hammered down, it is late uh, into the week, maybe even the Friday of expiration itself. So I think there's a good opportunity for that. Um, again, I want to see uh, a test of 3850 before I start thinking about it, though. Uh, if we continue to see very light volumes here, we're probably going to have uh, a very nice setup. Um, but uh, today, I don't see a whole lot of people deciding to get in front of a steamroller and lay down uh, going into the weekend. So maybe, you know, last 30 minutes, maybe we lose another 30 points. Maybe we open up at 3850 Monday, or maybe we get a little bit of a bounce and then come back down on Wednesday. But uh, generally, the lows of that week, if it is a down week, which is very rare, like 80% of the time, it's an uh, up week for uh, options expiration cycles. But if you're having a down week, it's almost always takes at least through Wednesday before you see a low. So I'm going to say uh, yeah, that we're kind of bearish yeah, here. Yeah. I appreciate you sharing those thoughts uh, to uh, just to essentially repeat ideas percolating in your mind. I do, in fact, recall uh, on infrequent but enough occasions over the past five years in which going into an op options expiration cycle preceded by lots of put buying that Anywhere between a four-hour to two- or three-day trade into the op, uh, options expiry Friday, having seen uh, SPY call options in a very short-term time frame, bid out of the money, increase in value uh, as much as five times. So, um, of course, uh, predicting that... At right at this moment in time, I would hazard never to do, but I uh, I am looking for the setups where something like that possibly occurs. So um, so we'll look together and uh, see if we can find something or see if some opportunity does in fact present itself. But uh, I would. Uh, 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 just uh, lastly, say I wasn't thinking about doing anything today on that for sure. No. Uh, wait till you see the whites of their eyes. Thanks for the call. Thank you. We'll be back in a minute. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. As we return, we continue to look out here uh, and we got a couple of questions. One, do I expect a bounce before today? No, <laughs> I expect that we'll, we'll auger in <clears throat> in the last, I don't know, 15, 20, 30 minutes. Uh, I don't think that there are a lot of people that are long on uh, margin, uh, but there are probably a few. My guess is that there are still some people that probably are uh, significantly long and didn't get on the bounce. They said that we're going to probably sell, and they didn't. And maybe this will be enough to force them out. So maybe we get more volume at the very end of the day. But um, right now, it would have to be extremely intense, and I don't see it with the way that the volume is going. Right now, we're uh, at about 8.5 billion shares. And the last major low down there at that 3850 level, although we pierced it before and came back into the trading range, was on about 18 billion shares. So um, I'm still suspecting we have something fairly low. Now in the queues, we had this double uh, gap out here to 280. That's the May 20th low uh, on 91 million shares. Today, we got 55 million shares so far. So let's say that we get 72, 73-ish. Um, still going to be fairly significant for the queues. Um, but I think we have, like I said, I think we've got one more, either a blowout before the end of the day, or one more really significantly lower day. Now, maybe it takes to Wednesday next week. My guess is if we don't get it by Wednesday, uh, then the market will probably start moving back up a little bit. But I don't, you know, we've got a big gap down. You should see expanding volume, not contracting volume. When you look against the queues on the days up from May 26, you had 59 million shares. You got 55, 56 on a big gap down. So I'm not, uh, I'm not that incredibly bearish out here. But again, uh, we need to see how the market actually tests those lows. And for the most part, I don't see a lot of reasons to trying to get out in front of this and speculating which way it's going to go because uh, I don't think it's speculation. I think it's a bet. I, don't, I think we probably should just wait and bide our times if you're thinking about buying a low. If you're absolutely committed to the end of the world, um, that's interesting. But uh, I don't think it's useful at the moment. 877-927-6648 if you want to call uh, in this. Uh, but uh, no, I'm probably just uh, for the end of the day, I'm going to probably close all my screens uh, and uh, probably not talk to anybody, not watch anything on TV. Just watch how the market closes for the last hour and see if there's anything. And of course... Uh, Read everybody here Sunday night when futures back open back up because my guess is that they're going to be pretty wide. Yesterday, I kind of had a scenario involved where I thought maybe we would have had this overnight and it blown out in the futures and then opened up with some decent numbers. 
the numbers were horrible and it just got worse. Uh, but, uh, you know, what else can you say? There isn't a lot uh, of visibility at these levels, but there are some stocks that I would love to buy, and a lot of them don't have a great deal of volume today. Uh, question about PLTR from uh, Ronald. Uh, yeah, again, this is kind of uh, summertime trading that sets up, which is you're not going to have a lot of volume on the downside. So people really trying to push these things uh, to zero are problematic. But this actually looks like it's just back to support uh, here around eight bucks. And a fairly decent company with decent profit uh, over the years and in the future probably doing fairly well. You know, I don't see any reason to buy it today, but if we did have some kind of decent low come in mid next week and you wanted to hold something, I'd, I'm not buying it for the squeeze into Friday. But, uh, you know, if you were looking for finally a chance to come back, this does kind of look like it's coming back into what should be support right around that uh, just eight dollar or just under eight dollar level. But not a lot going on in there. Question about the SMHs. Um, even with what was really fairly good news from AMD last night, uh, talking about how they were expanding, uh, and even Taiwan Semiconductor uh, talking about blowout earnings, it, it wasn't enough uh, to hold these SMHs up. Uh, we are, though, with about 3.5 million shares, going back into this low of May 12th that had 8 million shares. So let's say we end up with four and a half million shares today. That's still going to be almost half in an ETF, which is uh, pretty amazing. Uh, we're not quite into that bar yet at uh, 2115. But, uh, you know, if we got some kind of overnight uh, blowout and volume was light, there's where I might start buying calls. And again, I'm probably not going to be playing a lot of this stuff. Uh, with uh, anything that I can't trade 24 hours a day and get out of instantly and have uh, fairly limited uh, exposure. Uh, equities are still very problematic because you're taking a great deal more risk, the entire load, uh, when you can limit your risk with options. So I'm not a big fan of uh, jumping in front of that proverbial steamroller uh, into even next week. Like I said, I'm more thinking... Uh, a very targeted uh, sniper approach to picking off very specific stocks uh, in very specific sectors. But it's hard to get all that excited about lower prices here. Uh, I know how horrible this sounds and what the headlines are going to read, uh, but uh, it's not that bad. Uh, we had some other questions in here. Uh, Google and Tesla. Uh, take a look at Google L, because that's what everybody trades, right? Uh, you're back together. You're back into a candle that had uh, about 1.9 million shares with 1.3. Uh, social media still has all its own problems. Uh, if you were looking to buy this next week, uh, a possible low could come in around 2180, 2175. You do have a double gap. These things are like magnets. And I suspect that you're going to get that at least tested. So we'll look for that. But uh, you had, you know, 1.9 million shares up. You want that to come in there and test it with like 1.2. Uh, and maybe that starts a little ABC. I'm not uh, wanting to be in that sector myself. Question about Tesla. T-S-L-A. Uh, kind of coming back. Like I said many times over the last week or two weeks, um, this is always a company I looked at as a, about 40 or $60 of absolutely true value. Uh, people are trying to pay for the next 50 years of earnings on this, and there are going to be a lot of people competing with these in the skies of the near future. Uh, they missed on getting their truck out with the Fed uh, Ford F-50. There are a ton of new cars, with, uh, totally electric cars coming. So, not a, not a fan. 
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. As we return, we've got one last question, I think, for the day, maybe a few more. Uh, looking at buying dog, D-O-G, says, uh, missed your show so far, though. Uh, pro shares short. We're so close to what could be a fairly decent low uh, that I'm not interested really in chasing a low. If we had heavier volume, then I think that would really matter. But as we went through the beginning of the show, there are so many of those stocks that don't have heavier volume, especially the bigger stocks that are going to matter on the indexes. Now, maybe we get those when we retest that 3850, but I'm going to wait until it tests it. I'm not going to predict how they will hit it, but I'm pretty sure with about a 80, 90 percent confidence that we're going to test 38.50 next week. And if we don't have any volume, then maybe we get a fairly decent bounce. Probably going to be late in the week, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But that's about it. I don't think that there's a lot of reasons to get too far ahead of ourselves. If you're short, then you can stay short. But if you don't have any positions now, not a big fan of trying to chase these things down after you miss the entry point. 
there's always going to be another trade. I've heard somebody else say that. And uh, I'll wait until the next. Uh, as I said uh, earlier in the den, I'm waiting for a burning bush. I don't want some kind of uh, namby-pamby kind of close signal. I want a signal that really is bright and vibrant because that's what you should get with kind of market action that we've had like we've had today and through yesterday's afternoon. Um, but that's kind of it. Sell when you can, not when you have to. We will see you here Monday. Same bat channel, same bat time. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. 